It's officially autumn now, so I guess I can wear my witch hat in public, huh? <laughs> Hello, I am Reyna, your friendly neighborhood witch of what the f- and I am super late for this week's video. It's been a good week, it's been a super social week. I think I've been busier this week than I have in the last couple of three months. My best friend from high school was in town, so I got to see her and her husband. Uh, Tuesday was the equinox, the autumnal equinox, which is probably one of my favorite holidays that isn't, you know, nobody too much pays attention to it. but. I'm a fan of mythology, Greek mythology, and that is the day in w on which Persephone <laughs> descends back to the underworld to meet with her husband, Hades. Uh, it's problematic, you know, kidnapping, Stockholm Syndrome, non-consensual, lots of things, but in the world of mythology, you know, it's one of the sweeter tales. Anyway, I had a few people over, a socially distant bonfire in my backyard, and I made a delightful drink. This is pomegranate juice in celebration of Persephone and also apple cider for the autumn, bourbon, my favorite, maple syrup, and ginger ale. It's really freaking good. There's a link to my blog below, uh, down, <laughs> you know, beneath the video where below is not the underworld. No syrup is here today. Uh, anyway, also in this blog, I rant about those recipes when you're you know, surfing the internet for something to make and you find a recipe it sounds good from the snippet, but then you have to scroll through like 18,000 pages and 2,100 stupid glamour shots of food to get to the recipe. And it drives me insane. Seriously, Karen, I don't care about the donkeys in Budapest at the turn of the century. I just want the recipe. I just want the recipe. Anyway, if you just want the recipe in a really short blog that hopefully will make you laugh, it's good. Click below. As tasty as my cocktails are, I know that's not the reason you're here. So without further ado, we shall get to the video. Today I am painting, guess what? Halloween inspired things because Halloween is the greatest holiday of all. Okay, so first of all, I'm painting on a hexagon tile. How exciting. My pillow paint as always is, well, I shouldn't say that. I might switch things up one of these days. You just never really know. But this particular pillow paint is Color Place in Onyx. You can buy that at Walmart. I mix it with GAC 100, excuse me, 800 on a uh, one cup of paint to one tablespoon ratio. And that is a polymer, I can't remember the word right now and it prevents the paint from cracking because a lot of you will have cracking problems. This will help. So right now I am adding actually a metallic paint. That's the black. It's Artist Loft Metallic Black. This is Artist Loft Metallic Orange. Big old glob. Oh, no, I kid. That is a third color. <laughs> That's actually Jacquard Pearl Axe pigments. Yes, so I actually even put a little bit of dollop of the orange paint in there because as pigments are super beautiful and they spread and you have all the shimmer and shine in the world, they're not always so color fast. So adding just a titch of tube paint will make it like so much better. This is Artist Loft Metallic Purple. And I'm gonna follow it up here, I think. Let's see. Ah, yes, this is another one of the Jacquard Pearl X pigments, and this is Misty Lavender, also with just a tiny bit of purple tube paint mixed in so it'll stay color fast. And now, the Jewel of the Crown, my very favorite fluorescent green. It is not iridescent or metallic or shimmery or any of that for shame. Now, if you had all of those mixed in one, I don't think I'd ever use any other color. So it's a good thing it's not. Anyway, this is by Master's Touch. It's called Fluorescent Green. It is semi-opaque, which is really nice because almost every other fluorescent green I have found has been totally transparent. And I, I like this one because the color stays more vibrant. Uh, got some bubbles to pop. Yay fun. Oh, and 
here's the cell activator. The cell activator is the agent that uh, spreads over the paint and as it stretches back, which is the purpose of the pillow paint, creates all the beautiful cells that you will see in, in this, uh, this technique. This technique is a uh, Shelley art style. It's by a woman named Shelley Crothers in Australia and she has a course. If you are interested in taking it, I really recommend it because you'll learn so, so, so much and be able to make super cool stuff like this. Uh, for once, I got the camera angle right and you can actually see me blowing on it. Amazing. And I have got the tile on top of a small silicone mat, like a baking mat, 12 inch square, 12 inch circle, and that is on top of a cake spinner. It's one of the good aluminum ones, so it's really heavy duty and you can spin it very quickly and it's very even. Uh, don't get a cheap one, you know, you're just gonna end up having to replace it because you're not gonna be happy with it. Just, it's 30 bucks, go for it. Spreading paint all the way to the edges so when I spin it, it has the lubrication to flow off the edges because you want it to. And now you can't really see it for the lighting, but I am blowing the metallic black out over the matte black, I'm sorry, satin black, that is the pillow. And it's creating some pretty cool tendrils. Gotta watch where I put my elbow. I put it in wet paint a few minutes ago. Ah oh, yes, painting tendrils. It's kind of like an amoeba becomes an octopus and dresses itself like a Halloween freak. I don't know, something like, something like that. <sighs> this is long, I should probably go make another drink. Oh, here I'm blowing a hole in that big section of cell activator because for some reason that part didn't stretch too well. So I'm like literally 90 degree angle straw to painting, blowing it in at that. And um, that's creating cells right there. So when you blow, you disrupt the cell activator and it spreads out and it like, the way it spreads is it makes all the little holes which become cells as it shrinks back in and then you expand it out by either tilting it or spinning it like I'm doing here. Gotta watch out for that wet paint. It's neon too, you know, I could be a little festive on top of it. And of course in my head I'm singing the Dead or Alive song, you spin me right round, baby. Side note, while I was spinning this, uh, since now <laughs> I've decided it's way, way, way too hard for me to talk about what I'm doing while I'm doing it. ADHD, it's just, it's just the way it is. So, instead of talking while I'm doing this, I just have the sound turned off. And meanwhile, I have been watching my new favorite YouTube channel, which is Ask a Mortician with Caitlin Doughty. She is funnier than hell, and also she talks about pretty interesting things, uh, particularly the series Iconic Corpses, I must recommend. <laughs> The things about the one about Moby Dick, primo. Anyway, since it's spooky season, if you would like to expand your horizons and learn some stuff about history and such, watch it. All right, there's the finished product, wet. Uh, it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful. I love the way that uh, as I blew the orange out over the black, how we've got kind of like a fiery tendril thing going on. And like the cells that kind of stretch off just to that one point are pretty cool. And then there's just a burst of electric green and black. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, this is dry. This is not resined. I have to wait about three more weeks to do this. So. When you paint with this style, you need to let the paint cure for about three weeks, if not longer, before you coat it. So I will eventually coat this in resin and it will be gorgeous. It looks a little flat right here. It will not look flat. It will like have that bright, vibrant tone to it. 
Oh, look, end of the video. See you later.